General, uh, the first question I have is one that I think a lot of people around the world are asking. Sure. And that is, how long does the military intend to stay in power in Thailand? Well, to answer this question, I don't want to use that we want to stay in power. Because at the very beginning, we are not doing this just to seek to gain power. What we are doing, or we are where we are at the moment, is to uh, to solve the problem of the country, the countries. Because Thailand was at the deadlock, and um, there should there must be someone, you know, to unlock that deadlock. So we work to move the country forward, and asking just to be to be clear that we are not want to stay in power and we have never thought about seeking to gain power at all and asking how long right now uh, we are working uh, according to the the roadmap that been outlined to the public to the people to the international that is the the criteria for working now a year ago, when this roadmap was first introduced, it appeared to be a short and straight road. Mm -hmm. There would be political reform. Mm -hmm. There would be a new constitution drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be an election. Mm -hmm. So how far down the road are we? It's still the same. We still expect the same outcome from the roadmap. We still, you know, uh, if you follow the situ situation, we have three uh, our roadmap is divided into three phases. The first one, the first uh, phase is to to deal with the urgent problem in the country, to unlock the deadlock in order to move the country forward. And the second one, uh, we are now uh, talking about um, having the interim government. We are having the um, interim charter or constitution. And we are, ha we are having um, the, you know, National Legislative Assembly. Um, of course, we have the Charter uh, Drafting Committee. We have the National Reform Council in order to perform um, their responsibility according to the roadmap or as stated in the roadmap. We still uh, stick with the roadmap. And of course, uh, the third phase would be election. So it has never been you know, any change uh, happen uh, lately. We still adhere with the roadmap. Again, a year ago when we were talking, there was, I think, even among some of those who were skeptical about the coup, there was optimism. Mm -hmm. And now there are some voices who are saying that a permanent part of the electorate, the, the rural poor, the people in the north and the northeast, are going to be permanently disenfranchised by this process that you're taking sides, in other words, mm -hmm. with the, in the, in the, uh, to simplify, in the yellow versus the reds, that the military has backed the yellows. Well, thank you for asking this question. Uh, I think we made it clear at the beginning that we want to, to uh, decolor. The, we don't have the political, like uh, the color-coded political in Thailand, because at the very beginning when we enter, uh, to this you know, situation. We made a promise to the people that uh, we would try our best to, to uh, unite the people. The color code that you know, must be you know, wiped out because we all are Thai citizens. Because you know, uh, playing politics by uh, trying to create the color code that lead to rift in the country. So we do not want that to happen in the country anymore. So uh, just to, to, to be clear that uh, we are doing our best to unite the country. So the case of, of um, taking side, uh, you know, or we are supporting the yellow or the red is not the case. You can rule out this. Martial law was in effect until recently. That has been lifted now. but. General Prayut, the Prime Minister and the Army Chief who carried out this coup, has sweeping powers, Section 44, and there are other laws. So some people will say things really haven't changed much. There's not freedom of assembly, there's limitations on the media, 
uh, people don't feel that they can speak out. How long does that need to go on? Well, before, uh, it, it is not an easy question to answer. How long does this need to go on, or to continue? But just to make you clear that, uh, of course, we understand the sensitivity of the, the martial law act. In fact, the martial law act in Thailand is completely different from, from, from uh, the others of, in people's perception. And uh, of course, we understand the, the, con the con um, sensitivity. Then we shift from, from martial law to, the, uh, you know, to invoke um, Article 44. I understand you know, people's perception that, OK, uh, nothing changed much. Other than that, uh, the bottom line is uh, the acts or the law still give the uh, sweeping power to General Prayut, right? But if you look into situation on the ground, uh, I think the Thai people, uh, most of the Thai people understand that uh, the way my Prime Minister or Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha uses his power is in a very constructive way. For example, in the case of the IUU, the illegal, unreported, and uh, unregulated, um, you know, fishing. So, uh, if we use the normal uh, regulation or normal routine to deal with the problem, it would take time because uh, one very important thing needs to be done is the uh, law amendment. And if we take the normal process, it would take like six months at least. You know, to, to complete the uh, law amendment process. But the way he used um, Section 44 is, you know, to enforce the law and to bring all the organization and, and uh, office to work together to integrate, to, 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 um, to synchronize all of the, the effort uh, together. This is the way that he used the um, Article 44 to deal with the problem. And he never used Article 44 uh, to anyone in particular to, to like, uh, prosecute anyone, to uh, uh, jail anyone. Not, 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 there is no such case happen. The military has been running the country now for a year. Uh, in the words of the Wall Street Journal, Thailand, which once had the fastest growing economy in the world, mm -hmm that this economy is now stumbling badly. There's a perception that the NCPOs, that this military government's support will depend on how well you are able to run the economy. In fact, we had one uh, opponent of, of, the, of the government tell us that if you're not able to get things in order in the next six months, that there will be trouble. Well, I think economy is not uh, the issue for, for Thailand alone. Every country, every administration, you know, not rely on, but it's the main responsibility you know, of every government in the world to move the country forward, to, to um, you know, make the, the, the index, the economy index plus, plus, plus. But you look at you need to look at the uh, situation before the military, uh, the Thai military, you know, take over the control of the administration. We we were at the deadlock. Our budgeting process has been uh, ceased. I mean, has been been paralyzed. The caretaker government cannot do anything because of because, I mean because of the uh, res restriction uh, because of the law, and of course. During that time, the country was even, I mean, country's economy even worse than this. And of course, if the military did not step in, uh, can you imagine what happened with Thailand? We have confrontation, uh, we have uh, violence being instigated on the daily basis, on nightly basis. We lost uh, accountability, credibility in the international eyes. And right now, uh, we start to, our economy start to pick up, even though gradually, but it's not because of 
uh, we are incompetent in uh, dealing with the economy. It's because of the slowing down of the uh, global economy as well. So, uh, but we are confident that uh, we start our economy start to pick up. If there is trouble, how will the military react? What kind of trouble? People are out on the streets demonstrating. They they come out like they did at the beginning of the. I think we passed the worst situation already. Just to be uh, uh, to be clear, I want to emphasize here that uh, what happened in Thailand in the past, uh, it not a new phenomenon. It's happened in, in many countries. This is the, the problem of the democratization in Thailand. Of course, uh, not only Thailand has encountered or has this kind of experience. Maybe your country uh, or other country have the same sort of experience, but you experienced long, long time ago, maybe 10 years, 20 years ago, and you are able to pass through that situation and become this strong or become the point that uh, you, know, you are uh, very strong now. Thailand want to do that. We want to get through that situation and join the club. We want to be as strong as you are. We want to be as uh, you know, um, sustained as you are at the moment. So it's a, a process of transition. I understand, but in democracies, if there's trouble with transition, there are not military coups. Of course, uh, you might say that this is the unconventional way of, of dealing with the uh, transitional period. But if you see that uh, in some country, they, they, they choose to let people uh, deal with the problem or uh, solve the problem. If you look at some country like in um, Middle East country, you know, where uh, they let people solve the problem, what happened? Casualty, a, a, a large number of casualty happened, and the country is nearly collapsed. You need to create peoples again from from debris. We uh, we see we foresee the, the 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 problem in the future. We don't want you to you know choose that uh, way of dealing with the problem, and we don't want to you, you know build rebuild the countries again from debris. But the decision that was made obviously has come under criticism from Western Europe, mm -hmm. the United States, and many other countries. And we wanted to ask about the foreign policy to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. They declined to be interviewed and referred us to the, the military, essentially. So I've, I have to ask you a question. There's a perception that in view of the sort of cold shoulder that Thailand has received from the West, that Thailand is now making a turn towards China and creating a quite a cozy relationship with China. Do you see it that way? Well, we don't see it that way. First of all, I must uh, say that uh, from the very beginning, we understand the mindset or the perception, and we don't argue. We are not saying that uh, we want you to support us. We don't want a green light from, from, from you. We don't want to say that, uh, from, I mean, from the state in, in particular, we don't want you to say that we are doing the right thing. We know uh, this is not the norm or the value that, you know, uh, that is belong to, to uh, the, the US in particular. But we would, we would just want to let you know that uh, we are doing this because of we need to do this, not because we want to do this. And of course, uh, with the United States, we do value the relationship which is more than 180 years. We are the oldest partner. We are the oldest ally. Uh, many foundation in, of, of Thailand has been built, you know, according to what we have learned from the United States. We still treasure that kind of, of relation, that kind of bond. Our relation is, is still, is very close and still close, nothing changed. Our present king, our beloved king was born in the United States. This is the fact that uh, yeah, 
tie our two countries even closer. It made the tie between our two countries become even, even, even stronger. And what we have asked at the very beginning is just understanding and give us chance to fix the problem in our country, to be able to restore and to, be, to, to restore and bring back the fully functioning democracy to the country. And then uh, we can join you later. And if you look at, uh, uh, if you put aside the, the, um, the unconventional way of dealing with the, the problem in the country, asking, you know, if Thailand move away from international cooperation, if Thailand um, deny cooperation with United Nations, if Thailand uh, move away from the U.S., no, it's not, it's not Thailand that move away. We still avail ourselves in all cooperation with United Nations, with the United States, with the EU, with all countries. Our foreign policy has never been changed and has never been disrupted by the political situation, I mean, by the domestic issue. In fact, we do not want, want uh, what happened in Thailand to jeopardize the relationship between the United States and Thailand. Because we understand, and just to let uh, our friend know that uh, this is temporarily. This will not happen in Thailand forever. Situation occurring now, it will not be a forever situation. It would just so therefore we don't need these temporary things, and it, but 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 it's, it is important to jeopardize the relation between Thailand and the state, and of course, uh, asking about uh, to be seen as you know we play like China card or we have a cozy relationship with China. Well, in terms of. You know, you have mentioned earlier that the economy is very uh, important for every country. And other than that, uh, you know, Thailand, the previous, the elected, previous elected government had made a uh, commitment in, you know, many issues with China. And of course, this is a commitment not uh, be just between people to people. It's between government to government. So we, it is our responsibility to fulfill the commitment we have with uh, the other countries, uh, regardless China, the US or European country. Whoever uh, our previous government, uh, in the, by the name of the, the Thai government, the Royal Thai government made commitment with our fr friend, we must you know, uh, fulfill that commitment. And of course, uh, China has offered us the opportunity to move the country forward in terms of economy. You understand that uh, uh, we need to look after the, I mean, our our agricultural sectors, and China offer us to uh, the opportunity to to be able for us to uh, look after our eco our agriculture. Uh, for example, you know they agreed to to buy the community the, the commodity uh, from Thailand. So this is the way that I believe uh, if uh, you are not biased, you would agree that we have no other choice but to move on and of course to uh, continue to move the country forward. And this is a cooperation be the cooperation between Thailand and China, of course, uh, would help to move the country forward as well. Where we have uh, you know, limitation due to uh, you know the uh, legal pro. I mean, I mean, I mean restriction have uh, posted by by um, ideology. You know, the way um, the Western country or the United States look at Thailand uh, as we are the we are not democratic country, but in fact, uh, what we are doing now is to further strengthen. In order for us, for Thailand to become a fully function, to become a sustainable a democratic country in the very near future, we are not seeking to, uh, you know, playing uh, China card or Russia card. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, we do value, we do treasure the relationship we have with uh, the United States, nearly almost two century now. And we don't want the temporary situation happen at the moment to jeopardize the very long-term relationship between two countries.